mid-November. Had a great ride down to Rye uh, a few days ago and uh, roads were a bit gritty, a bit damp, but the bike handled really well and just fantastic to be back on it. And because the MOT has been extended by six months, thanks to Boris, then uh, that's not due till January, so I didn't even bother getting it MOT'd either. So, back on the road. And whilst it went really well, it did identify a couple, three problems. <clears throat> Firstly, had the bike on the camber of the road with the steering lock on, in gear, stop it rolling away. And uh, when I tried to get the steering lock on, it was all a bit sort of jammed up a bit and I was pushing the handlebars just to sort of twiddle it to release the lock. Snapped off the indicator. Uh, I said this before, these are £4.50 a pair. <laughs> and they rip off sort of um, motor gadget uh, bar, end mirror, uh, bar end indicators. Um, plastic, cheap as chips. Um, they do work, they're quite effective. Nowhere near as good as the real thing. Might be time to invest in a decent pair. I do like them, but I think, especially on this side with no bar end mirror, you do, and a, and a fairly short grip, you do find yourself with the palm of your hand if you're sort of manoeuvring the bike around, and that was enough to snap a very thin piece of plastic threaded bolt. So that's the first thing. Second thing, when I got back, smelt quite just had that hot smell about it and it was only about six, seven degrees. So I'm thinking this can't be overheated. There's, there's just no way. And uh, afterwards, I noted when I parked the bike that there was oil dripping sort of off the front of the, uh, the crankcases, almost where the side stand is mounted. And it seemed to be dripping and running down. It's quite a lot of oil around the engine from the barrels downwards, so crankcases mainly. So nothing coming from the top end as such, or so it would seem. So I've got to look at that. But what I did was uh, used gunk, a degreaser, got all the grit off and all that shit. And I, and I don't normally use a jet wash, but because I wanted to clean all this oil off to see where it was coming from, I used a jet wash, cleaned it all up, worked really well, got all the crap off, but Whilst it started immediately, as it has done ever since I did the modification that uh, I think Kiwi Roy suggested, it was running. I thought, right, okay, just uh, mop it all down, dried it all off, started it up again, or tried to start it up. A very faint, faint click. Not, not the solenoid hard clicking in like it was before, just the starter relay. I'm thinking, oh, that's not good. Is the starter motor jammed in? Anyway, on further investigation, that uh, big chunky, I think it's a 32 amp cable that I ran as a the modification from the battery via a inline fuse down to the relay contact, from the relay contact down to the control wire on the solenoid of the starter motor the inline fuse had blown, so definitely the right thing to do. I don't know whether it's because somehow water's dripping across terminals or something, shorting something out, or whether something's been rubbing on the frame and the water is then causing that to short out. I've got to have a look at that. So, do something about the indicator. I might just temporarily change it for the, I've got one spare, one from the last time, um, and place an order for some other gadget. I take the tank off and have a look because like, having cleaned it all off all that oil put it back in the garage and having had it all dried out a load more oil has come out so i'm thinking it's got to be something under pressure because the engine was only running for 15 20 seconds um and i'm thinking maybe some sort of breather or return or one of those big pipes has either burst come off or something because it's all run down the crank cases of the engine again all fresh clean oil because I've done an oil change um, so I need to have a look at that that's not great so tank off have a look at the oil 
check out all that wiring I did and the solenoid making sure there's nothing untoward that because I don't want to be having the same issue if I'm ever caught out in the rain and uh, all of a sudden I'm blowing fuses that's not great and uh, yeah do something with that indicator cool okay let's make a start on the uh, starter issues uh, first of all I'll start off by uh, disconnecting the battery it's uh, absolutely essential when you're working near the uh, high current side of the starter motor and uh, and then I'll remove the starter motor and just check the uh, teeth on the flywheel as suspected fuse obviously blown in the uh, the inline fuse and I had heard um, when reviewing it initially in my last video that um, some people experience blowing fuses. I'd never experienced that. I'd only ever had the loud click of the solenoid engaging. So I've replaced the fuse and uh, hit the starter, checking first that there were no short circuits, no damage to any wiring, no short, no, no, no nothing untoward, which there wasn't. And straight away, the loud click returned, no turning over of the engine, and promptly blew the fuse. So I put it in gear, and I've turned the, uh, the, the wheel just to sort of maybe thinking that the, uh, the pre-engaged starter was still wedged in the flywheel but it seemed to be turning all right there was no sort of click uh, I was listening very carefully to, to ensure that uh, if it sort of sprung back you'd hear a sort of a, a return of the uh, the Bendix nothing tried it again with a smaller fuse and straight away click loud click of the solenoid bang fuse going straight away which is not good I said since I did this fix some time ago now been out on the road you know numerous occasions no problem started it must be a hundred times not once did it stutter or fail and now we're back to loud click but even worse blowing fuses as well so back to the drawing board I need to uh, have a look at the uh, the last video I'm going to work through all of the online information on uh, on the websites and uh, pay a little bit more attention to what and how and why the uh, the fuse was blowing and what the theories behind that are, and uh, maybe have another look. Uh, I will, I think, in the meantime, just give this a test on the bench, but. Um, yeah, this does seem to be a guzzy problem, a gutsy problem, um, and uh, I don't know, you know, is it a starter motor problem or a wiring problem? Not great, could be worse, could be summer, and I can't get it on the road. As it is, it's mid-November, and um, I've got the winter to play around with it. <laughs> No! Right. Got to do something about it. Clamped it to the uh, workbench, there's not it flying around. The old battery, which is still, uh, I charge occasionally, is still in very good nick. And connected the earth up to the, uh, the chassis of the star motor. The positive to the, the terminal on the back of the solenoid and then really all you need to do is just short out between the live and the control wire on the solenoid and we should see this throw in. And I've just done this several times, probably 10 times and it's very slow. It does throw the Bendix in, it does turn over, but it's turned over really slow. And on one occasion, bang, it came in really quickly. 
and started spinning very, very quickly. So let's have a look. That's really slow. Whoa, that's what it should be. I'm glad I did that. Um, yeah. Only on one occasion. That seems to suggest that the contacts within the solenoid aren't great. And they're not providing the amount, the full amount of power to the starter motor to really give it that oomph. You know, I stripped down the starter motor last time and um, there's nothing really wrong with it. But I didn't, and I don't think you can, it doesn't seem like I could sort of strip it down. The solenoid doesn't seem to have any uh, serviceable items. <clears throat> that 200 quid a pop, and I'm not entirely convinced, as I said before, that they don't just go give it a test. Yeah, it seems to be working, and then throw it back out. Let's, um... Have a think. Right, <clears throat> I used a little bit of WD-40 just on this spline because um, it did seem like it was a little bit sticky, perhaps from uh, just a little bit of dust and uh, build up. And as opposed to sort of operating very quickly, uh, once in every sort of ten times randomly, it now operates a lot more quickly most of the time as you can see but then occasionally it kicks in very slowly and it's just turning over and occasionally it will do that and then it will get faster which seems to me to seem to suggest that it's not stickiness on this spline although that probably didn't help um, and that actually it's about the contacts in this main solenoid. It's definitely working better. I think it's working better because whatever carbon build up or whatever was on that uh, contact is perhaps burnt off. Although it's a bit of a long shot. Let's put it back on and uh, hopefully it's cleared itself. I think if not I'll um before I do that, I'll have a look at the uh, the video I took last time and uh, see how far I got down with the, with the strip down. Right. One thing I've noticed um, in all those starts, that both the starter motor, but even more so the solenoid, is very hot. And I know someone's going to say, of course it bloody is, you've been running it. <laughs> and it's not meant to run for that sort of length of time, which may well be a... Um, uh, an obvious truth, but it does seem to suggest that maybe it gets better when it's warm, or there's a uh, a build up in there. I don't know. Hmm. The plot thickens. So once the starter had cooled down, I just did uh, a few more checks and used the jump leads to start it again. 
whizzing it around and every single time now it's really operating very quickly and spinning very powerfully very quickly as well so I, I can only put that down to a bit of a stickiness and dryness that has picked up dust or whatever um, and I think the thing that's and I've, I've reviewed the videos as well that I did and, and the solenoid part on the starter motor doesn't have any way of dismantling it One, you can take off the the armature, the bit that throws the, the gear, the Bendix, into the uh, flywheel. But you can't get at the bit which is sealed uh, behind some kind of pressing to check on the condition of those contacts. So basically whether the starter motor itself was all a bit sticky and that was slowing down and therefore the contacts weren't making fully nice and clean and snapping clean then the motor was turning over slower as well I've put it all back on I've cleaned it all up and uh, whilst I've had a 30 amp fuse in the inline fuse that goes to the starter solenoid I've blown on my 30 amps I've got to hold it some more <laughs> if I had to blew me 20 out a spare one as well so what I've what I've got now is a 15 amp fuse which is half the 30 amp that was in there originally and bolted it all back together I've cleaned up all the, the, the connections as well in the starter relay which is uh, in the side panel now which was under the seat and all the connections on the starter motor itself and Sure as eggs is eggs. First time, every time. So I think what that demonstrates is that the way I'm not hugely impressed with this starter motor, and uh, I noted uh, that on YouTube there was another guy somewhere in North America, and uh, he's managed to purchase a starter motor. I would imagine some form of standard starter motor, whether it's for a bike or a car. He paid $50, he said. These are £200. So, um, and that's only a reconditioned one. But what it does demonstrate is any delay in getting that solenoid absolutely banging in very quickly, whether it be to the stickiness or the control wire voltage or whatever it is, if that's slightly slow it draws such an enormous current even though it's rated at 10 amps it will draw 30 plus amps for quite some time much longer than it was designed to and it just blows the fuse so a slightly different problem before it wasn't getting enough to actually even engage the starter motor now it's getting enough, in fact too much, for too long and, and therefore blowing the fuse. So it's all kind of kind of, and it, it just demonstrates that Motor Gutsy have somehow, by accident, designed in a very fine tolerance. Anything goes wrong, stickiness, lack of voltage, slightly flat battery, whatever, is either going to blow fuses or not start. You get the double click, the single click or whatever. Yeah. Well done, Motor Goodsy. <laughs> I'm just happy it starts. And I think in future, if that starts to go wrong, I shall just whip it out. It's, you know, once you know where to go and what bolts to undo, it's 10 minutes. Give it a bit of a clean up, um, a bit of WD 40 on the, uh, the Vendix shaft, clean all the connectors, put it all back. I shall be carrying spare fuses as well. <laughs> right, so done the indicator that was a, a, a very quick job it's now starting again which is great back to the oil leak um, yeah got to start stripping it down tank's got to come off got to have a look under there i've had a really good look um, with a floodlight there's more oil definitely on this side than that side it's all 
running down the crankcases. It's not coming from anything above the barrels. The top, the, the top half of the engine, i.e. under the tank, is completely dry. In fact, really, you know, it's, it's quite dusty. Um, I did note that someone uh, somewhere commented on one of my uh, videos or photos or something, I guess it was on Facebook, and said, uh, oh yeah, you could do with a few more bug splatters, suggesting it doesn't get ridden. Well, it does get ridden. It's in filthy condition right now. <laughs> it's a motorbike. But um, yeah, I've got to strip it down. I'll give it a clean at the same time. Got to find out where that oil's coming from. Right. No point putting it off any longer. Must crack on. So, as you can see, there's some oil sort of uh, around here. There's little puddles, which I've just cleaned them out. Uh, this, and there's four little wells here, here, there, and just underneath the uh, alternator. Alternator's all completely dry, barrels all dry. All around here, it's all dry. Everything's dry. It's just filling up here. And then it's running down here and running down the front. So being so close to the old pressure switch, which is a replacement one with a different connector, a spade connector, and a different thread. And that is the, uh, this here is the conversion adapter from Gutsy Bits because they no longer make the old uh, pressure, oil pressure switch. You think, oh, that's where it's coming from, clearly. No, it's not. <laughs> it's difficult to see, but it's absolutely bone dry down there. You can just see there's a bit of paint flaking off here. Um, it's just bone dry. There's two big oil feeder pipes here to the barrels, and that comes from the, uh, as a T underneath the alternator that goes to the oil cooler. They're all bone dry as well, and even slightly corroded, the, one of the, the washers here. I have no idea where this oil's coming from. It's a little bit of uh, oily, sticky, but nothing that resembles oil actually pouring out or anything, so really tricky. And no idea. <sighs> I've cleaned it up and uh, down here, see underneath it's, it's actually a little bit wet it's not like there's a great big puddle on the uh, on the lift there's a bit of a mystery uh, maybe I'll go on one of the uh, forums we shall see right put all the starter motor back in and all the covers back on and I've cleaned up all the connections obviously as I went and it's all working really well now um, so didn't really find the fault, but as I said, um, it seems to have uh, resolved itself with a bit of cleaning up. Um, the other thing, uh, oil leak, as I said, checked it everywhere. Cleaned it all, cannot find not even a dripping gland nut or oil line, nothing. Um, <clears throat> don't know, bit of a mystery that one. Um, so I'm going to finish cleaning it all up I'm going to run it for five minutes out on the road and uh, come back and, and just have another really good look see if I can see any any leaks yeah ongoing the third one was the indicator as I said uh, I replaced it and uh, I had a spare one uh, at these were the four pound fifty and as I said the the shortcoming is this plastic uh, bolt which as soon as you start to tighten it up, it just, and the slightest knock or anything, um, it just breaks. 
so cheap as chips. So I thought, right, okay, I need to go and find uh, some uh, motor gadgets. And while I was looking to see which bit like uh, Apple products, you can't get them cheaper anyway, <laughs> came across this. And I thought, £4.29, so uh, 20p cheaper. <laughs> And there it is, and I thought, well, that's a photograph, and it's clearly showing a steel bolt. And I thought, yeah, maybe that's just a motor gadget unit, and they're just showing it. But so I thought, well, at four pounds um, twenty-nine for a pair, based in you know being sold from the UK, so I thought, well, I'll buy a pair. And uh, yeah, sure as eggs is eggs. And they do up really solidly and they, there's no wobbling around or anything. The other thing is that this one, and you can see the LED in it, has one LED. Uh, you probably can't see it on this. And, uh, and then there's a sort of reflective bit which kind of looks to um, reflect it around so it becomes sort of omnidirectional, I suppose. Um, this one, it must be a, an upgraded sort of a new output from China. 13 LEDs and uh, I just checked it on the battery it is so much brighter and has so much better light dissipation from any angle now I know the motor gadgets have a you have to sort of position them so that they uh, they light front and back obviously um, but this seems to just light up everywhere so I've just put one on and we'll do a little test uh, just to demonstrate how much brighter it is the other thing which is a bit of an anomaly, because obviously when you connect these in, normally you need to put, and I purchased, the resistors, um, which have to be put in in a certain way. Otherwise, because they're LED and they're low current, they flash too quickly. Because this has got an ECU and it's all kind of done electronically, as soon as I plug these in, they were fine. I never needed those resistors. In fact, when I put them in, they just won't work at all. So. The downside of these original ones that I put in was that when the ignition is turned off, there's a very faint glow, and I'll show you that in a minute, which of course is a bit of a draw on the battery, which is not an issue in itself. It's very low draw, very low current, but leave it there for two weeks, three weeks, a month, and you're gonna drain your battery. And I kind of live with that. Well, you know, they're cheap and I'll replace them with motor gadgets and all this bit. These don't. Well, they don't appear to, they don't light. So, um, yeah. Let's have a look at uh, how they work. Right. I've turned that off. I've turned the lights off. And of course, the, the light comes on on the camera. But I don't know if you can see that. That there is the faint glow of the LED um, and it's it's more it is more profound than you think but on the other side not to kill myself in the dark which is the new one no such glow which is good so let's turn these on and let's put the right hand indicator on and it is, you know, it is, to be fair, it's reasonably bright. Um, but when you turn that onto the other side with the new LEDs, it is so much brighter. It's significantly brighter. I'd say, you know, twice as bright. And it, no matter what angle you get it at, you know, it is bright all the way around, which is great. <laughs> because obviously you don't want a car driver not seeing it, pull it out and uh, taking you out for the count. So that's really good. <laughs> good to get a success occasionally. And for £4.29, came in a week. I have to say, that's pretty good. And you can actually see the 13 LEDs as well. So let's, um, let's turn that off and put the lights back on. And as you can see, if you sort of close right in there, you can see all the the LEDs. There's two rows of them. Um, the other thing that uh, it comes with a third wire as well, 
which if you connect the other wire in, instead of yellow, you get white. So if you, uh, if you did want a sort of bar in type white connector, that's available as well. So uh, yeah, all round a, uh, a really good result. And just by way of, uh, of proving a point, just to give you a, uh, a good indication, this is the old version with the plastic bolt. And as you can see, the kind of pattern it gives you, I don't know if you can see that on the, oh, let's move my arm. It gives you a ring of light, it's fairly bright. You know, they've been good, but not great. Um, whereas the new one, is so much brighter. Oh, that's the uh, wrong one. It's so much brighter and gives you a much better light distribution all around from any angle. You know, that it's not just a ring of brightness. The, the light is all over and you know should you need some daytime running lights with a uh, that sort of fitting that is very bright um, not headlamp bright but uh, daytime running light bright certainly so uh, yeah pretty pretty impressed with that Disappeared. Where's the other one gone? Here we are. And it's not as yellow either as this one. You know, it's kind of a yellowish, whereas the, the, the new one is truly amber. brighter so much better cool let's get back out on the road